Hi everyone, I'm Troy Richardson and I'm a zipline expert. I have a master's degree in technical writing and an engineering degree. As a zipline expert, I've investigated way too many accidents. And over 70% of the accidents I've investigated, many of them you see here, were braking related. Either the patron couldn't brake themselves, something malfunctioned, or the system was not inspected properly, or the participant guide failed to reset the brake. That's the problem with some so-called emergency brake systems, is a participant guide has to reset, and if they miss that, well, you know what happens. I will show these videos in their entirety so you can hear these individuals, because they were injured seriously. Many of them lost areas of livelihood. No zipliner wants to go home in a body bag, and I've investigated five of them. There is a common denominator. It's a two-wheeled pulley. Yeah, these two-wheeled pulleys travel at 95% gravity. That's extremely fast if you've ever fallen off a ladder. And now you're falling on a zip line? Many people don't know that gravity is a constant. These zip line trolleys accelerate at the speed of gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second. But these trolleys are out there. And if you've been zip lining, you've probably used one of them. Write in your comments what your ziplining experiences were when you used a two-wheeled pulley like this. Because many zipliners won't go back. I have zipliners all the time wanting to go ziplining and asking me what zipline is the safest. <laughs> Yeah! First zip liner. First zip liner coming in backwards. You're good to go, man. Thanks, man. Yeah. <laughs> In 2002, Park City Mountain Resort received my friction braking trolleys. No, it wasn't this trolley, but it was a fail-safe trolley very similar. That zip line has been accident-free, braking-related for over 23 years. That's unheard of in the industry. In 2020, Granite Insurance produced numbers 6 to 7 accidents per 100,000 zip liners. More than half were braking related injuries. Recently, in a magazine, they published their prediction for 2022, jumping that number to 15 accidents per 100,000. Now, what does that mean? Well, let me compare that with roller coasters, because I used to build roller coasters back in the 80s and early 90s. Roller coasters have one injury per 16 million Riders. And now compare that with 15 per 100,000 zipliners. Well, the industry needs to change and we're here to help. Recently, ASTM F2959 added friction braking and spring brakes to that standard. I wrote a letter back in 2022 that helped the standards realize that what was going on currently was not working. When you have a braking related problem being dominant in your zipline accidents for over 10 years, we need to do something. And I believe every zipline should have an emergency brake, like a spring array that resets itself, similar to the one we built in Park City, and we have other solutions for these arrays. So they fit on your existing zipline. But if you're building a brand new zipline, or if you want pillow insurance for the zipline you're currently operating on, meaning you can sleep better at night. This friction braking trolley has two brakes. It's a fail-safe trolley. It's not a pulley with two wheels. It has one wheel, a primary brake, and a secondary brake. It also has adjustments for speed. As you move closer to the brake, you get more braking. All zip liners will stop in the same location once you establish that location on your zip line. 
we give you extra adjustments because zip lines are dynamic. When the temperatures get colder, zip line speeds get faster. When temperatures get warmer, zip line speeds get slower. Now it's unfortunate that anyone who weighs 150 pounds or more is two times more likely to be injured on a zip line using a two-wheeled pulley than any other rider. The second leading rider weighs 100 pounds or less. And the reason for that is these zip lines often cue these lightweight riders. With this trolley, all zip liners positioned in this carabiner and stop at the same place. Because a 35 pound zip liner puts 35 pounds of force on the brake, whereas a 300 pound zip liner puts 300 pounds of force on the brake. And if you're an engineer, you might understand that, but believe me, these trolleys work. We're on slopes up to 34 degrees in Utah at Olympic Park. You see that video in the background. Zip liners are coming in very slow on a zip line that could reach terminal velocity. That's 120 miles an hour. And then at St. Martin, our technology is coming off a 42 degree slope, extremely steep. And the zip liners are coming in safer. They're not flying to the bottom like they would on a two wheeled pulley. It would be catastrophic. And if you saw the videos of me testing that two wheeled trolley, I only have a 15 pound weight on it. The more weight on that pulley, the more energy there is to stop. Zip lines are dynamic. We need a dynamic trolley, not a pulley, to meet the needs of our zip liners and to share with them the beauty of zip lining without the fear of an accident. Thanks for watching.